All right, friends, and we're back. I've had a moment, took a snack break, and what's happened in that time, the paper is ever so slightly damp. It's not like maybe 100% dry. However, it's dry enough where you can see the difference in the ink. You can see things tend to lighten a bit as they dry. It's also a little darker in real life than it is with this camera. I happen to have really good lights. But what's fun about this dry ink now, or relatively dry ink, is that you could choose to work over it. So for fun, I can take my charcoal here and really just come right in and work over it. So if I really want to beef those darks up, you can see I can just come right in and draw right over what I've done. So it's sort of like you're drawing almost on top of a painting, except, you know, technically if it's ink, it's considered a drawing. So it's kind of nice. And I think I'll keep some of that in there without really touching it too much. I don't feel a need to really buff it so much as what I'm doing here now is really just beefing up my darks. What you can also do is you can add a little bit of chalk. So if you want to let's really just sort of add a little bit more jazz and a little bit of extra highlighting to your piece, you can also add a little bit of um, you can add a little bit of chalk to the piece as well. But I'll set that aside for last. The thing that's fun now is that you can really come in with sort of your really juicy details. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush and suddenly like, um, my phone's blowing up. But I'm gonna take this time now really probably to work almost exclusively with just, you know, that dark, dark ink and really take the time now to really juice up my darks and really take this drawing to a nice finish. So you see, I'm showing you kind of two ways that I'm darkening up these horns. One way is coming in with the charcoal. The second way is basically coming in with my brush and my ink. And I soften it by kind of coming in with a clean, a relatively dry brush and then softening it from there. I'm going to beef up that other edge as well. And so let's see, what else can we play with in here? So once again, too, I'm going to give that deep, dark area in here a little bit of attention. Of course, not the whole area around the mouth, but enough to really highlight the teeth. Because I want those to really pop. And then the rest of it, I'll just soften some. Again, with a dry brush where it's just sort of becomes almost sketchy. And waiting for my music to buffer. I think it'd be a good time to start playing with this eye a little bit too. Let's see what we can do in here. Really get it extra creepy. So I got that pupil in there. And I'm going to very, very carefully delineate the edge of the iris. This is where having good brushes that keep a point is really handy. So those times when you want to get precision with your brush, 
you can. And again, even an inexpensive brush can keep a good point if you take good care of it. Remember to clean your brushes with soap when you're done and take a moment to just sort of slip it back up to get your, um, your point retreat. So I'm going to take a moment and actually I'm going to get a little bit of bloodshot action in here. So at this point, you guys know how to generate calligraphic lines with your pen, I mean with your brush. If not, go back and practice. And while I'm at it too, I'm going to actually kind of add some extra emphasis to that eye socket. to really kind of get it to pop a little bit. Let's see, what else can we do to sort of have a little bit of fun? I'm going to antique this a little bit more by adding a little bit more wash to it, darkening up the washes, especially around these little corners. What I'm trying to get is a little bit of that sort of sense of antiquing right around the sutures. So I'm actually going to kind of work some of them wet into wet. Add a little bit of water right along there and then add a little bit of ink. The goal here is really to have fun. You know, ex you're exploring the media here. So, you know, if your stuff doesn't look like it's quite ready for you know, publication yet, don't fret. You know, the goal is to enjoy yourself. And remember, this is a sketchbook assignment. So it's meant to be a place where once again, you explore your work, explore the capabilities of what you can do without the pressure of worrying, well, it's going to be an A, B, C, D kind of grade, because that's not how we're rolling here. Yeah, we just want you to show up. So I'm going to do the same thing around all these other little sutures. I'm going to come in, add a little bit of water and a little bit of ink just to sort of, again, soften them up. As well as adding a little bit of antiquing. Again, this is just a little wash that's on my palette. I'm choosing to keep my teeth the widest. So the more I add pigment to the rest of the skull, the more it tends to help emphasize, you know, that the teeth are still staying white. I'm going to add a little bit of tone just because I can wet into wet here. So I often use a lot of just clean water to soften my tone, soften my edges and things. You can also make use of, as your water gets a little dirtier, you can use that in and of itself as a wash. So all of this that I'm just applying, this is just the dirty water out of my jar. You can then choose to add a little tone on top of it and let the wet on wet just sort of bleed into it to kind of create that extra value. So what you're seeing is both we're working some of it wet and wet and also some of it dry. Like most of our background is pretty dry as is most of the skull. But in some corners I'm adding sort of a preemptive strike of water before I add the pigment. And this is just a creative choice, boys and girls. There's no law that says you gotta go that way. But the goal again is I'm just having some fun with it and trying to see how antique -y I can get it to look.
even adding water to my washes to let them fall. And I think what I'll do at this point, let's see, I'm going to just push a little further on some of these edges, like here and down here in the teeth. You know, I want them not only to look sharp and well-defined, but I'd also like a little tartar around them, like ill. And my music is buffering. So I'm adding a little bit of shadow to the teeth as well, since I'm in here. And since I'm, you know, giving him really bad dental work, I'm going to give him a little tartar down in here as well. I'm also going to complete some of the wash in this eye region leaving just a little room for light or I may even choose to add it later the more to make it kind of funky and scary and I really like what's happening here I mean I'm, I'm very pleased with how this has turned out and again giving myself room to add more value as I want to. Again, as I apply tone on tone, I'm very quick to soften my edges. You may choose to leave yours in place. It is just a personal choice. And again, at this point too, I'm just looking to see what I can add in. Now you can also come in with your pen if you chose to. You can come in and sort of emphasize your deepest, darkest areas using your pen, which is a perfectly valid approach. I'm going to stick here. I'm having so much fun with my brush. I'm going to just stay here with it because I've got enough going on with the brush and the charcoal and I you know, choose to not clog up my pen trying to run over charcoal that's a bit much but you can do it especially once you've anchored your charcoal down pretty well Let's see what else I want to play with in here so again I'm at that point of really just hitting I'm just doing finishing touches at this point I'm pretty happy with my horns I might choose to, you know, emphasize a little bit of the contour, but I don't think I want to do all of it. I don't want to give away the store and just sort of, you know, have outlining with ink drawings in it or ink values in it. However, I do really want to highlight these teeth. So I think the way I'm going to do that is by really darkening this negative space that's around it. Yeah, I like how that's happened. Notice I didn't take that dark all the way down to kind of give it a little sense of recession. I'm also going to just refine the jaw down here at the bottom again to just punch it up and help separate it from my background. Again, everything doesn't have to have, you know, a super sharp dark line around it. I definitely want to hit this other eye socket over here. Again, hitting that dark value, but allowing some of that light value to stay in there. Again, to give it a sense of hollowness, a sense of recession. But this dark is like pushing the fact that, you know, it's going off into the deep dark beyond. And again, I'm just going to push a little bit of my contour and then just choose to lose that line. I don't have to, 
give every single thing, you know, an outline or a contour. Again, I'm going to push my darkest ink straight out the bottle, just again to reinforce the base of the teeth and really give him a bad tartar job. Because I, I tend to think tartar on teeth is a little creepy. That's just my thing. And you can just look around and see, like, what else in your drawing do you want to play with? Do you feel needs a little bit of time and attention to help, again, aid the creepiness? As a sketchbook drawing, you know, you don't have to worry about making mistakes. Because why? You can always draw it again. You know, don't feel like it's got to be exactly perfect the first time around. But I'm actually really very happy with this piece. I feel that it is sufficiently creepy in terms of where he is. What I'm going to do just to show off some of, you know, the skill with the brush is I'm going to add a few little creepy trees in the background. You know, Bob Ross, God bless his soul, he had his happy trees. I'm going to add some creepy trees. Why? Well, because I can. And if you like drawing trees the way I do, your time would be well spent learning how they grow. Just really take pictures of trees with your phone or your camera and pay attention to the way they grow. So just adding a few little creepy trees in the background to our creepy drawing. You can even choose to have a little creepy house off in the distance somewhere. Like say I might want to put a little creepy house off to the side. You know, a little creepy house off in the distance with the creepy trees growing in behind it. So it's your creepy vision, your creepy scene, and you get to determine how much creep you want to add in there. So as a finishing touch, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come back in with a little bit of chalk. This can also happen with white temper paint, but chalk's kind of easy to get hold of. And I'm going to just spend that last little bit of time hitting my last finishing touches. Just enough to, one, put a little shine in the eye. Eyeballs are generally wet, so I like a little shine in them. And I'm also going to use it really to just reinforce my teeth. Because remember, just like you ran charcoal over this dried ink, you can also run chalk over it. So once your wet media is dry, you can always add more dry media to it. And so with that, we're going to sign it. And that completes our demo, folks. Thank you for joining me. And let's see here. I'll put it over here where it can be seen. Alright, so thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.